Good evening, Ben. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, Jati. Um, it's uh, been a little bit too long, but I'm glad that we're, uh, we're, sw uh, we're swinging the bat here again. Um, you sent me uh, two interesting articles, uh, but let's start with, uh, well, there's one about uh, vegans and, and vegetarians. Vegans and vegetarians. One of my pet peeves are vegans and vegetarians who think that what they're doing is 100% correct mm. and not realizing that they're, they could very well be less healthy than people who are eating meat and animal products. I'm all for veg. I'm all for vegetables. You know, mo I believe mm. most of our calories should come from vegetables. Nonetheless, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you got to keep in mind that you are going to be missing key nutrients unless you go out of your way to get them. I mean, you mm. can do it. You can definitely do it. You can, uh, if you're conscious about being a vegan, you're going out of your way to get make sure you're getting quality protein, and especially as this article is talking about, uh, vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is only found in uh, animal foods, but it's not really made by animals. What is it that makes vitamin B12, Jonathan? What is it that makes it? Give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. Mm. It's not animals and it's not plants. Um, does it have something to do with bacteria in the gut? It's exactly what it is. It's bacteria. Bacteria, which are neither animal or plant, or what make vitamin B12. Now, ordinarily, these bacteria live in the, in the bellies or in the intestine of ruminants, mm. or they live in the soil. So they live in the soil, you should be able to get them from plants, but because we use pesticides, mm. we kill the bacteria. So mm. consequently, and, and even if we don't, I mean, we do use pesticides, but even on top of pesticides, through food processing and shipping. And, we wash and, the heck out of vegetables. Don't yeah, we? by the time you get your yeah. vegetables, there's no B12 yeah. left in it. So if you're right. uh, only eating vegetables, it's very likely you're going to be deficient in vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is very important for the nerves. It's important for the blood. It's incredibly mm. important vitamin. In fact, vitamin B12 is the most potent of all the vitamins. It's mm. the only vitamin that's dosed in these tiny microgram doses. Right, right. I noticed these that, yeah. Tiny doses. And vitamin B12 is a spectacular vitamin. If you look at the chemical structure of vitamin B12, it's this beautiful symmetric mandala. You know what a mandala is? Like one of those sure. uh, uh, Indian kind of uh, beautiful symmetrical artistic Like the Buddhist kinds. sand paintings or something like that. Yeah, they're really gorgeous. And vitamin mm. B12 is like a mandala. It's just this amazingly beautiful hmm. chemical structure. Uh, it's, and it's the only uh, purple vitamin It has the uh, uh, credit it gets the credit for being the only purple vitamin. It's really beautiful huh. to look at, huh. but B12. Mm. Uh, it just has gorgeous purple color, uh, but it's uh, very active, very potent. It's only required in very tiny amounts, but there's a couple problems with vitamin B12. Number one, the pro big problem is, is it's hard to obtain. You've got to get it from eggs or from dairy or from organ meats. Um, it's found in the ruminants of animals. We make some, but uh, our bacteria, our gut bacteria, make some vitamin B12, but because vitamin B12 is absorbed in the small intestine, uh, by the time the bacteria make it, it's kind of downstream from where the absorption takes place. So you can't really count on the vitamin B12 that you make in your gut bacteria. On top of that, many people have dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, uh, chlorine in water, fluoride in water, antibiotics in water, taking antibiotics intentionally, all these conspire to mess up our gut bacteria. People have intestinal problems. So you can't really count on vitamin B12 that's made in your own microbiome. Um, so the best way to get your vitamin B12 is going to be from food. If you're a vegetarian, then you're stuck with supplementing or... You can use fortified nutritional yeast. I love nutritional yeast mm -hmm. um, as a as a uh, nutritional uh, as an all around nutritional supplement, yeah. especially for minerals. But uh, so nutritional yeast has to be fortified. It doesn't there's not a lot of vitamin B12 in nutritional yeast, but you can get it fortified. And then uh, there's another really good source of vitamin B12 for vegetarians. This is what all vegetarians should be eating, and that's seaweed, specifically oh. nori seaweed or red <laughs> algae. You're laughing. I'm laughing, Ben. Can I tell you a little secret? Yeah. Um, I, I was a vegetarian for about seven years. Okay. And uh, the some of the staples in my diet were um, uh, was seaweed, certainly, and uh, 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 just basically everything you're describing. So it, it seems like maybe I was one of the vegetarians squeaking by on the side That's of right. uh, if doing you're, what I needed and, to do. And you know we got to distinguish veganism from vegetarianism because vegetarians mm. can still eat eggs. So eggs will get you some yeah. vitamin B12. But I'm, let's talk about yeah. veganism. If you're a vegan and you're not eating eggs, you're not eating dairy, uh, you really got to go out of your way to consciously get vitamin B12. Now, 
uh, it can be done. I, it's not like I'm down on vegans or down on vegetarianism. I just find it ironic how a lot of vegans think that they're doing themselves good by eating just vegan, vegan-friendly foods, and they can end up nutritionally deficient in one of the most important of all the vitamins, which is vitamin B12. Uh, vitamin B12 is particularly important for the brain. So for older folks, it's really smart to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin B12, even to the extent of getting vitamin B12 shots. Personally, that's what I would be doing if I was starting to experience cognitive decline or, or for elderly folks, if you have a grandfather or a parent in a nursing home, vitamin B12 shots can be very, very helpful. There's two hmm. major sor- major uh, types or forms of vitamin B12. You have cyanocobalamin and methylcobalamin. Methylcobalamin is preferred. That's the kind that's in, your, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, one, one important point about vitamin B12 is it requires a certain chemical to be produced, that's produced in the stomach in order to absorb vitamin B12 from foods, a certain chemical, uh, a protein called intrinsic factor. And this intrinsic factor is made in the stomach. If you have any digest, uh, stomach problems, any issues with the stomach mucosa, you may not be making, or even just general malnutrition, you may not be making this intrinsic factor. So even if you're getting enough vitamin B12, you may not be absorbing vitamin B12 mm. because of a lack of intrinsic factor. Also, the same is true if you have any small intestine problems. Mm. If you have any problems with the intestinal line, if you have uh, uh, any kind of uh, yeah. SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or any small intestinal problems, again, you may not be getting the vitamin B12 that you need. Mm. Um, if, you, if that's the case, then you're pretty much going to want to use the vitamin B12 injections, intramuscular injections. Most physicians and even uh, alternative practitioners can do vitamin B12 injections. Spectacularly important vitamin. Uh, but you know what? All the B vitamins are spectacularly important. And you don't want to sure. – I'm always troubled by emphasizing one B vitamin over the other because the B vitamins exist in nature as a complex. Mm. B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, folic acid, they all exist in nature as a complex. And you really don't want to get into just taking one of the B vitamins. And again, that's why a supplement program is so important. It's like getting on a well-rounded supplement program like the one that you get from Longevity, the Healthy Star Pack, that gives you right. the entire yeah. mighty 90 essential nutrients. So if you're dealing with memory problems, if you're dealing with fatigue issues, if you're dealing with circulatory blood issues, heart issues, neural problems, neuropathies, ALS, autoimmune issues that affect the nerves. You definitely want to be thinking about vitamin B12, but don't just use vitamin B12 because the, the whole B complex is, is important. They, they all work together. They work as a team and they're all important. Well, I, I remember meeting some vegans who just didn't look healthy. They looked kind of pale and seemed sort of weak and uh, I've, well, you know, I've had that conversation problem, where I'm like, are you getting everything you need, you know? Well, yeah, and another problem with vitamin B12 is if, or with vegans, I should say, mm. is uh, if you're a vegan, then you're probably subsisting, you're probably getting your protein from beans or from grains. Hmm. Or tofu, I've seen a lot of people use. Or, or well, tofu. Which... These are not quality forms of protein, yeah. especially the legumes. Yeah. Uh, a mm. lot of vegan-friendly proteins are based in legumes. Pea protein is really popular these days. Uh, in supple, in uh, powders, uh, protein mm. powders, and legumes are very problematic. Uh, a source of lectins, they can initiate immune reactions. They're not a great mm. source of protein. And then also, a lot of vegans are eating things like veggie burgers and processed mm. foods, and mm. a lot of soy, a lot of GMO soy. So right. Right. it's really tricky if you're going to practice veganism. Not that vegetables are not important, because I really believe mm. that most of our calories, whether you're a vegan or vegetarian or or uh, you're eating animal foods, most of our calories should come from vegetables. There's no doubt about it. Vegetables provide us with fiber, they provide us with phytonutrients, they provide us with a whole spectrum of nutrition that you can't get from supplements. The uh, plant nutrients, many of the plant nutrients, phytonutrients specifically, things like polyphenols and flavonoids and carotenes, you really can't get the, the well-rounded, uh, well-rounded uh, plant nutrients, phytonutrients from a supplement. You can. You know, supplements can kind of imitate it, but nothing like nothing like vegetables. And I really believe most of our calories should come from vegetables. I just find it ironic that vegans who think that they're doing their body good mm. by not eating animal food, and there's a lot yeah. of uh, militant vegans who really, and I can see their point actually, because I don't like killing Bambi. You know, yeah. I don't like I don't like uh, you know the, the fact that we are carnivores or omnivores. Mm. We eat meat. You know, I, I don't eat a lot of meat, and I don't even think meat is really that quality of food. Seafood's a little more quality than, than meat. Uh, small amounts of meat probably, you know, have, have iron and, and, and good protein, but you really want to be careful with meat. You don't want to overcook your meat, of course. But I find it ironic how vegetarians and vegans think that they're doing their body good may actually, as you say, be not doing their body so may, – may not be doing their body so much good because they could be deficient in vitamin B12. They could be deficient in, in quality iron, quality protein. 
Uh, all of these are densely packed in animal foods, particularly meat, as well as eggs, and also to a certain extent dairy, although dairy has its own problem. Ben, what about cholesterol? Do people oh, come wanna... on. You don't, wanna, you don't want me to do the whole cholesterol thing. Well, well you <laughs> don't have to do the whole thing, but I would just imagine that if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, that that's a, well, a vegetarian, as long as you're eating eggs and dairy and whatnot, or cheese or something, I suppose you can get it. But... You're vegan. You're not going to be getting the cholesterol. Uh, yeah. that's, not, that's a good point. Uh, your body can make cholesterol, though. Mm. So there's no real nutritional need for cholesterol because your body can make cholesterol. In fact, there, cholesterol is so important that when you uh, when you put cholesterol in your system through food, your body just makes less. And when you don't have enough cholesterol coming in through food, your body makes more. Mm. Now, cholesterol is made in the liver, so mm. you got to make sure that your liver is healthy. And a lot of people don't have healthy livers. And there's actually mm. people who don't make enough cholesterol. Cholesterol is, I know we said it before, I'll just say it again since you brought the subject up arguably the single most important biomolecule in the body. It is the body's quintessential building molecule. Right. It's important for stress management, it's important for life management, it's important for growth, it's important for healing, it's important for handling all the ups and downs of vicissitudes of life, and to suppress cholesterol production artificially or pharmacologically is one of the silliest, one of the just most biochemically ignorant of all medical strategies. I, I can't be more clear on that. I wanna really emphasize that. You know, I, I, I feel like we're always bringing it up, but it's just so important since you, since you mentioned it. Don't worry about cholesterol, eat cholesterol, but if you're, not eating, if you're vegan and you're not eating cholesterol, you can uh, pump jack up your cholesterol by uh, eating carbohydrates. In fact, that's, the, that's one of the main reasons why people have elevated cholesterol is because they're eating too, many, too much carbohydrates. Okay, right. So uh, carbohydrate or sugar product, uh, uh, insulin actually, will tell the body it's building time. Insulin's a building hormone, cholesterol is a building molecule, so when your insulin goes up, your cholesterol tends to go up as well. And that really is the problem. It's not the cholesterol that's really the problem when it comes mm. to heart disease, it's the insulin, and it's the sugar. So if you really wanna take care of your heart, you don't have to worry about the cholesterol, but you do, you do wanna pay attention to insulin. In fact, lowering your insulin through intermittent fasting, caloric mm. restriction, mm. Uh, 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 carbohydrate restriction, ketogenic diet, keeping your insulin down, that is, very likely the most important anti-aging strategy, the most important longevity strategy that you could ever employ. So if you're a vegan, don't go around eating, uh, drinking a bunch of uh, Big Gulp Coca-Colas and the Well, you name I don't it, think vegans you know? do that, but sometimes they do the processed foods, you know, the, the, right. the, yeah, yeah. the, the veggie burgers or the tofu burgers or the tofu. That, those are all yeah. highly processed food and they're not really, sure. they're not nutritionally valuable in the case of tofu where they can be nutritionally, they can actually be damaging. And they can mm. actually be problematic in the terms yeah. of. Yeah, I, I went through the gambit of those. Uh, that, that, I, I went through the gambit of all of those uh, artificial meats uh, mm -hmm. uh, during my experiment with with vegetarianism and. Um, you know they have test tube meat coming out. Have you heard of the test the test tube meat this year? Well, and that's something year. I'm rather excited about. And from a, the the uh, kind of moral or environmental per, uh, justification for veganism and vegetarianism, uh, the ability to grow meat. In uh, uh, industrial, I don't, the nutrition, I don't know about the nutritional value of it. I, mm. I would have to explore. I haven't really explored right. what the nutritional value, uh, the nutritional composition, the nutritional makeup of the meat is. If it's just the protein and it doesn't have the vitamins and the minerals, it might not be as nutritionally valuable. And I don't know enough about that. I have to look into that. Um, but you know, it's really interesting about the veggie burgers that we we're talking about. Mm. I used to go to a show. I, don't, I haven't gone to it in a while, but there, every year or twice a year, actually, there's this thing called the Natural Foods Expo. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. So Every year they do one, uh, twice a year, they do it in Baltimore in the spring and they do it in uh, Anaheim in the fall, or the summer, well, in the fall, and it is unbelievably huge. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think it's, now it's four floors and it's, it's like four football fields, more than that. It's probably mm -hmm. eight football fields large. It takes you two days to go through, it, and every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger because every year we learn more about how to process food. Mm. We learn more how to, we, we learn more and more how to fake make fake food. Right. And this right. natural food expo is all the fake food processors mm. making mm. vegan friendly food and and vegetarian friendly food, and it's it's really food that has lost its nutritional value. And <laughs> yes, it's true they they replace the nutrients, they they throw the nutrients back in, but it's basically fake food. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you you know. It's just interesting how vegans and vegetarians, people who think this, that they're taking care of themselves, may not be doing their body a lot of good. And that's what that article was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just quickly, Ben, I don't mean to keep going on and on about this, but have you ever heard of a raw foods diet? That's great, the raw foods diet. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, raw foods are not perfect, but eating a lot of raw food is a great idea. The thing is, when a lot of foods need to be cooked or need to be heated in order to have their nutrients released, 
a lot of nutrients are tied up and they're locked up and you don't get the nutritional value. You, you get less nutritional value than you would get in a raw food sometimes than you do from a slight, slightly steamed food. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, there is value to the enzymes which are very, uh, very uh, fragile. And when you uh, cook foods, you lose those enzymes. Raw foods provide you with those enzyme, uh, enzymes. A guy named Edwin Howell wrote a book called Ed, uh, Enzyme Nutrition, I think back in the 1940s or 1950s, where he talks about how you have two kinds of enzymes in your body. You have enzymes that perform chemical reactions throughout the body. They're called metabolic enzymes. And then you have digestive enzymes, enzymes that are important for the digestive system. And according to Dr. Howell, the more enzymes that your body uses in digestion, the less enzymes it has for chemistry. And by eating raw foods, you sort of spare your digestive enzymes so that they can be used for metabolic processes. And this can improve longevity or even improve disease states so that eating raw foods can allow you to uh, con sort of conserve your digestive enzymes so they can use for, be used for metabolism. And he may have a point. I'm not 100% sure about that, but he may have a point. So eating raw foods is a great idea, but make sure some of your foods are steamed, some of your veggies are steamed or very, very slightly cooked. What you don't want to do is overcook. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And if you are steaming your veggies, use the water because the water has got lots of good vitamins in it. So yeah. use the water for soup right. stock, use it for your smoothies, drink it straight, put the water in the fridge and make a nice refreshing kind of light, lightly uh, veggie flavored beverage if you like. So the water is very valuable, especially if it's colored. The more color mm -hmm. that the water has, the more nutrients are going to be in the water. So you will lose yeah. some nutrients no matter whatever kind of heat you do, but at the same time, you'll also release nutrients that would otherwise be inaccessible in a raw food diet. So I would be going something like 70, 30 or 80, 20 kind of thing. If you're going to go raw food diet, try to get a little bit of steamed veggies or slightly cooked veggies in there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm imagining the, the water that comes off of uh, steamed kale is just magical stuff. Magical stuff. Exactly. Loaded with B vitamins, loaded with electrolytes, mm. Mm. especially the green, the chlorophyll's in there too. The, the green stuff, when you, when you steam your veggies to green in the water, that's chlorophyll. And that's really a wonderful detoxifying substance, antioxidant, detoxifying element, chelates, heavy metals and, and uh, toxins. Really, chlorophyll is amazing stuff. Um, well, uh, I just want to quickly say, I don't know if we'll leave this in, but uh, if anybody uh, thinks Ben and I should put together a cookbook, uh, leave, a, leave a comment and uh, let us know if you'd be interested. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun just to make up a couple of uh, recipes or something like that. And... Uh, uh, in a digital form, free to download or something. Um, uh, ben, uh, uh, thanks a thanks a bunch for um, uh, providing some good insight on um, if you know if you're going to choose the vegan or vegetarian route on how to be uh, uh, very healthy. Use your Beyond Tank Tangerine if you're a vegetarian too. You'll get a lot of the nutrients that you're missing in foods, including methylcobalamin, including the good vitamin B12.